There we go. Yay! Okay. This is gonna be super exciting. Um, I am live on you on YouTube. I'm live on Facebook. I'm live on Instagram. What? We'll see how this goes. I don't think I've ever done a triple threat before. Hi, Gamma. This is very exciting. I want to know how everybody is. Holler at me. Where are you tuning in from? Because I always love to hear that. For anyone that's new, I'm Shandy from Expression Fiber Arts. And we're having some tea today. Mmm. That is not true. Today I'm having hot chocolate, which I will tell you all about. Oh, hello, Sherry in North Carolina. Oh, a quick hello. Hello, hello. Hi in Malaysia. So today I'm having, first of all, I have this adorable mug. Um, it has a little whale tail. Look, can everyone see? It's a little whale tail. I got this at a shop in Asheville, North Carolina with my friends Gemma and Amy when we went there a year or two ago called Flora. Really cute shop. They have plants. They have little pottery things. They have coffee. Hi, Elena in California. Hello, Sylvia. Thank you, Sherry. Sherry likes my mug. Rachel's in Wasilla, Alaska. Woohoo, Alaska is my home. Kirsten loves the fireplace. Yes, I thought we could have a nice little fire today going. Hello in Wisconsin. Okay, so some things I want to talk about today are, first of all, what am I drinking? Because it's so good, I have to tell you. Second of all, I thought we could crochet today because I don't think I've ever crocheted in a live. Normally I knit. So that'll be fun. And then also I'm gonna be showing you some of the new yarn colors. I'm literally seeing myself in triplicate. This is exciting. <laughs> I'll be showing you some of the yarn colors I put up recently as well as um, little pin things. And then I thought I'd talk about some books. And then I had a request last time to talk about, oh, Kim is homesick with a crud. Oh, I hope you feel better. I hope you feel better. Um, to talk about productivity, I love it so much. I love talking about that. So I thought at, um, towards the end, I'm gonna give you a few tidbits of like some secrets um, that I have learned over the years just from trial and error, trial and error in our business and tell you what works. So first of all, Welcome everybody. I appreciate you joining me. I'm Shandy from Expression Fiber Arts where me and my husband um, We own the business together and we sell hand-dyed yarn knit and crochet patterns. So up first here is what I'm drinking today. This is Turmeric infused dark hot chocolate vegan fair trade small batch all plant-based It is good. Okay, I want okay I have to ask, let's settle this debate here and now. We won't settle it. I wanna know your opinion. Do you prefer, in general, dark chocolate or milk chocolate? Um, I am a dark chocolate person through and through. So this is a hot chocolate blend. Yes, dark. Milk, milk, dark, milk. Oh, dark. So I also have this really cool thing. I got these at my local spice store that I am putting in my hot chocolate. Black onyx chocolate sugar and espresso powder. So these are really good. They are super good. If you just so happen to remember to get whipped cream at the store, which I didn't, then you can sprinkle these on top of your hot chocolate and it's just delicious. So yes. Mmm. So that is what I'm drinking for anyone who missed it. I got this in one of those monthly, you know those monthly boxes that everybody has these days? I forget, sometime, several months ago. Super good. Elements Truffles. Okay. Alrighty, let's, I'm gonna show you some yarn. Um, so Sunday, I put up a new kit on a new yarn base. So we have a new yarn base let me just open one of these up. So this is a kit. Beep. If you're just joining me, I'm live on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram at the same time. So I'm doing everything three times. Oh, this is so cool. So this is a brand new yarn base. Just announced it on Sunday called Mirage Fingering. I love whacking a skein. Whack, whack, whack. So this is really cool. This is a blend of Superwash Merino Wool 
camel fiber, silk, and cashmere. And the natural color of the yarn is this soft tan color. It's not ivory or off-white like most of our yarns come. It has this soft tan color from the camel. So all the colors that we'll be introducing on this base are going to be very, um, they're not going to have any of the white spots because it can't get any lighter than this shade. So it also tints all of the colors. So they're just going to be a little bit more muted and moody and earthy and sophisticated. Oh, <laughs> I may or may not. Okay. I'm going to just clue you in. I may or may not have five new colors of it coming tomorrow. <laughs> you didn't hear that from me. Uh, okay. So here is this base. Look at that. Instagrammers. Look at that. YouTubers. Look at that. Facebookers. It is gorgeous for shawls and sweaters. Oh, if you, you well, some of you can see, some of you cannot. Um, I have a little sweater I've been working on. I've been using this in a Fair Isle fingering weight sweater. It works like a dream. It drapes really nicely. It has a little bit of, a little bit of give, but not a ton of stretch. So it's really great for color work specifically. So that is the Mirage fingering. And this was a kit that went up. Oh, I have to show you what comes with it. Hold your horses, everybody. Hold your potatoes. Um, so with this kit, every month this year, I love of the months. If you haven't figured that out yet, it just makes everything so exciting. Every month this year, I'm going to be doing a kit with a journal. And I have to show you, okay, I'm just gonna show you first, see if it'll show up. It's a color changing journal this month. What? So it looks like a tealy blue, but then when the light hits it, it turns purple. Stop it. It turns purple. Oh gosh, I thought, <laughs> I am sorry if I've missed all your comments on Facebook. I did not scroll down. <laughs> mm. Yes, Carla, shut the front door. Look at this. Here's some ASMR. So this comes with this kit this month. I only have a couple dozen left in stock. We have sold most of them already since Sunday. So but I just wanted to show you and you can check back every month. We're going to have different journals and different. Um, each one also comes with a prompt. So you have a prompt um, each month on what you will journal about every day and you can know that we are all doing it together. We're all connected. I love that so much and I want everyone to remember that you're never alone, especially in the fiber community. Like we're all out there knitting and crocheting. Oh, it's just so wonderful. So that's that. And the paper, if you love paper like I do, it has a nice feel, nice thickness, and it's a beautiful ivory color. Hello, everybody. Hi, Deborah. Hi, Verna. Hi, Sherry. -da 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 -da. And if I'm missing any YouTube comments, I apologize. This is the first time I've gone live on my phone on YouTube. And so um, the comments show up, but then they disappear rapidly. All right. So that was the, oh, I could tell you the name. The kit name is called Esteem. And while they last, they'll come with journals. Um, we may offer the kit later without the journals when we run out. We may not, but that's our new brand spanking new Mirage fingering yarn. Oh, da -da 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 -da. all right. What's next? Speaking of, of the months, hold on, sippy sip. Speaking of, of the months, I'm also doing because it just holds my heart a vintage floral inspired yarn of the month each month this year. January's was vintage rose. Speckles of pink and rose and pops of aqua blue. There's some cantaloupe orange and bright pops of yellow. Pokes of the undyed yarn and green and oh, super pretty. I'll hold it up to each of you. Thank you. 
So that was last month's vintage rose. There are a couple currently listed. And here's the cool thing. Each month, they are each coming with a little mini enamel pin. So vintage rose was this adorable little rose. Showing it to everybody. Um, super stinking cute. So today, I just announced February's, February's which is blue hyacinth. <sighs> da, 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 da. And I forgot to grab the pin at work. I just left the studio and came back to my house. So I don't have the pin, but it comes with a little blue hyacinth pin and they are all custom. All the pins are custom designed for our company so you won't find them anywhere else in the whole world. Hi, Bobberts. Um, so I will show you and the yarn base on these vintage floral inspired shades are going to be on our Oasis fingering yarn. So it's a blend of 50% camel fiber. So this is like a bleached camel fiber as opposed to the type that's in the Mirage. So it does start out that ivory color and it has 50% mulberry silk. Make sure you can see them in each camera. I'm live in three different places. It's very exciting. So this one is, oh, it's periwinkles. It's got blue and lavender and specks of lime and green and turquoise and sky blue, aqua, little pops of pink. Oh my gosh. And this base is incredible. It is so popular. It's a fingering weight and it's 500 whopping yards per skein. It's a little bit of a lighter fingering weight. And it is beautiful for shawls. I mean, get out of town. Shawls and wraps, it puddles, it puddles. It's also great for flowing, draping sweaters and scarves, luscious throws that you wanna to toss on the back of your couch because you're just elegant like that. But it's really, really pretty. Um, and my, my theory is you can start collecting these different ones and use them all together in a project if you like. Uh, but you can also look in our Oasis Camel Silk Fingering Weight category if you want to get some other matching shades. Always feel free to email us or ask on any of the socials. If colors match, we're happy to run over to the shelves and say yay or nay and give you our best opinion. So Vintage Rose Blue Hyacinth. Hyacinth. So I, I wanted to show you those. Super pretty. All right. So that is a new yarn. I did not bring this week's pattern. I guess I could actually start crocheting. Oh, I'll tell you about the hooks I like. Um, I didn't bring this week's pattern because I don't have it with me. It is with the designer at the moment, Jane Vincellis. But we did put up a pattern on Friday. Super Gorge. You can hop over and download it. Um, hi, Debbie. You can hop over and download it at expressionfiberarts.com. And it's called Leander, and it is inspired by roses. And I'm just so tickled. One of my favorite things in the business is when things just all come together and work out. It was inspired by roses and we published it on Valentine's Day. Da, 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 da. So perfect. All right, I am using, because I know everyone's gonna ask, Susan Bates hooks, and I'm gonna tell you why. I like all different kinds of hooks. I love the fancy hooks. Um, I've got different ones of those, but I reach for these so often, and I'm gonna tell you why. Everyone has a personal preference. Tell me what you prefer. Gosh, the YouTube comments disappear so quickly. I apologize if I am not responding to them. Laura wants to know if we have long run ombre yarn. Not presently. We are working on a possible option for that. So stay tuned later in the year. We're, maybe we might later. We don't right now. So the reason I like these hooks is because, now tell me what you prefer. They have short little necks. You'll find a lot of hooks before you get to this flat part have longer necks, and I prefer to crochet like I'm holding a, well, I shall demonstrate. Like I'm holding a um, pen. Unless my hand gets weary, then I switch to the knife method, but I'm gonna show you. So I'm just using some random pearlescent fingering yarn that I have. Hold up, everybody. I gotta turn said fire off. Oh, it's not working. All right, we're good. 
Okay, I like to crochet as if I'm holding a pen or a pencil. And so if the neck is too long, I'm not able to grab my stitches with my middle finger easily. This is how I learned to crochet as a kid. So on some of these screens, I might be backwards, but I guide my stitches with this middle finger. So if the neck is too long, then I just, I can't reach. Now that's not, that doesn't apply as much if I'm holding it like this. So sometimes if I've typed all day or I'm hurting or, you know, whatever it may be, um, my hands aren't what they were when I was 12, um, I will switch to do the knife method like this. And then um, another thing, which I might, we might do a video on this. I think we'll do a YouTube video. Um, you can crochet like this, so you have very little movement. If you have wrist pain, I know a lot of you deal with wrist pain because we love to knit and crochet so much that we sometimes hurt ourselves, and that's okay. Or maybe it was from something else. Um, but I taught myself to crochet back when I had kind of injured myself to where I was barely moving my wrist. So I'll go slow, um, but basically, you just kind of move your fingers like this. Um, anyway, so that's the hooks I'm using. All right, let's move on. Next, I was gonna tell you, some of you had asked what books I'm currently reading and I have good news. Good news, oh, I'm so proud and I'm so excited. I just finished the biggest novel that I, in my memory, have ever read. So on my iPad, it was three or 1,000 pages on my, iPhone, it was 3,000 pages. Uh, but it, either way, it was a massive novel. It was, which I've mentioned it several times before, it was Alaska by James Missioner. And Alaska's my home, born and raised. Um, same with my husband, Tim. And it will always be my home. And I finally finished that. So it starts from the dawn of time, way back in the eons. And um, talked about how the first people came over. It goes through everything from when Russia was occupying it to then the United States bought it. It talks about the whaling, um, the, the different tribes there, how they originated. It's just really so good. He blends history with fictional characters um, that span generations. So it carries all the generations, all the people through the story really exceptionally good. I highly recommend that book and I plan on reading more of his. He has other ones, Hawaii, Texas, Caribbean, I think. He's got a lot of different ones that you can read. Super good. So I'm super proud that I finished it. Look, and I know everyone's going to ask, um, what am I making? I am not making um, anything specific because <clears throat> I've learned I can't do lives and talk and keep up with comments and try to make anything uh, complicated. So I just, just have to do swatches or, <laughs> you know, basic little things. So this is not a color, if anyone wants to know. This is a color in a kit that we're working on a sweater pattern using a kit for later in the year. So keep a watch for that. Mm -hmm. oh, little sippy sip. Another book. This will appeal to everybody. If you haven't read this one, I think I've recommended it before, but I thought I would just mention it again. Knitting Comfortably, The Ergonomics of Hand Knitting by Carson Demers. So whether you knit or crochet, whatever this movements that we do, this is a great book. So it talks about posture, which is very important. I tend to like, sit crooked all curled up and eh, not good not good that's why i keep going back to my chiropractor uh so yeah lots of information in here super great book i'm assuming you can find it wherever books are sold not sponsored just a great book so that is knitting comfortably i'm reading it backwards knitting comfortably the ergonomics of hand knitting nice thick book looks great on your bookshelf so that's a good one to have if you have ever experienced any pain from hand knitting or crocheting. 
Yay, Jackie's been knitting 49 years and crocheting for two. Ooh, that'd be a fun question. Everyone holler at me. How long have you been knitting? How long have you been crocheting? I have another book to tell you about too. So here's another book. I read this one a couple years ago and I'm just restarting it and I thought, hey, what a great day to tell you about it here. A Guide to the Good Life, The Ancient Art of Stoic Joy. And I'll tell you why I picked this book up at the bookstore back in the day. Because you open the front cover and it says, one of the great fears many of us face is that despite all our effort and striving, we will discover at the end that we have wasted our life. Oh, 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 oh. That gets me right in the feels, right, right here because I'm pretty convinced my biggest fear is to mislive life. Like, I want to know the rules. I want someone to tell me, here's the rules, here's the ultimate rules. As long as you do this, you're living your life right. I am just terrified. I'll get to the end of my life and realize, oh shoot, I mislived it. That was wrong. I should have done this, this, and this, or been this, that, and that. I'm aware this is like, all silly in my head because we all do the best we can but that's just like this silly fear so when I read that I was like I have to try that book so it's by William B Irvine a guide to the good life the ancient art of stoic joy and it talks about the ancient stoics back in the day um, stoicism which may not be what you think if you haven't read up on it I recommend that you do so it just there's so many parts to the philosophy and it is just super helpful one of them being there are things you can control in life and things that you cannot. Uh, oh, Sandy wants to know, do you have kids or grandbabies? I don't have either. I don't have kids. I don't have um, pets. That's, that's the word I'm trying to think of. I have plants, but that is it. Um, so anyway, stoicism. There's things you can control and things you cannot. And if you expend all your energy and getting all frustrated over things you can't control, you're just wasting the energy that you could have spent on things you can control. Oh, that's, that's just one of like the many, 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 many things about it. It's one of those, I have a few books that I hold up on a pedestal as life-changing, and that is one of them. I really love that one, so I'm rereading that one. I hardly ever reread a book, but the really, really exceptionally life-changing ones that give me peace of mind they help me to be a better person, to think more of other people. I try to reread those because that's just good. I want to be the best person I can be. So those are the books I am. Yes. Hi from Dallas. Can you post a list of the books? I do need, you know what? I need to start a blog with all the books that I am currently reading. It was a great idea. Great, great, great. Yes. I love seeing how many of you have, um, how long you've knitted and crocheted. Oh, thank you, Emmy Lou. So I have crocheted since I was, well, nine, sort of, but I really picked it up when I was 12. And I started knit knitting when I was 27. How old am I? Oh, I'm 38. So 11 years. I thought I was 39 there for a minute. I'm not. Okay, another interesting topic, which I love so much. Someone had requested that I talk about this in lives. So I thought I would tell you, this may not interest you. It may, I don't know. I wanna hear your opinions on what you do. I also want to, oh, I love you too, Laura. I also want to, um, hi, Stephanie. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jay. I also wanna hear what you want these lives to be because I am still new to doing them. So I would love to hear your opinions and what you find most interesting. I thought it would be fun actually sometimes just to sit and do a silent live. So you could just prop me up, put on a movie or something and it's like we're friends and we're just sitting and knitting together. Wouldn't that be the funnest thing? I don't know, or it could be totally lame. But someone had asked how, how I organize my time in our business and what does a day in the life look like? What are my productivity hacks, etc. So I thought I would share with you several of my secrets, I guess you could say, that I have learned over the years 
um, and what I use in my business. You know what I'm trying to say? See, I am one track minded. I cannot hardly crochet and talk at the same time. Okay, so I'm gonna distill it down from the big picture down to the, down. So every year, Tim and I do a big yearly planning session. Some years it is a big, gigantic thing that, oh, we churn, we churn, what do we wanna do? Other years we're just like, hey, we're cool. We kinda know what we're doing. No, not a big deal. So it varies every year, but we usually try to get away for a couple days, plan out what the next year we want it to look like. Is there anything we want to change? Do we want to um, work more, work less, take, you know, do new promotions, new products? What do we want to do? New yarn bases, do what patterns we want. So we get a big overarching picture once a year, usually in the fall, because I like to plan out the next year, usually in October. I definitely don't wait until January 1st because that's too late. The year's already started. So, I mean, it's never too late. You, you know what I mean? Um, so we usually do that in October-ish. So then we kind of have that big picture. So then what I do, Tim and I are different. He pretty much keeps everything in his head. I have to write things down. I love to write things down. So what I then do, since I know our bigger overarching plan and concept and vision, is I um, weekly, I try to on Sundays have a little mini pl planning session with myself and get clear on what I want the next week to look like. And then I write down each day and the to-do list for that day. So on Sundays, I write down what I'm gonna do Monday, what I wanna do Tuesday, what I get done Wednesday. And many times that all doesn't get done because my, uh, I think I can get a whole lot more done in a day than I actually can. So that's what I do and then each day I get up and I review the list and I prioritize the list. So if it's like answer emails, post about new products, send out an email newsletter, you know, whatever it may be, I number them in the order that they need to get done. Um, I number them in the order they need to get done so I don't even have to think about it that day. I literally just do number one and then I do number two and then I do number three. So that conserves my brain power and my mental energy, especially as the day continues on and um, maybe my brain starts to get a little tired. I just have everything written down in an ordered list. So what do I do about planners? I know a lot of you have asked me about planners, which one I use, which one I prefer, and I have tried many. I've tried bus different business planners, I've tried a lot of the bigger name brands that you see. And currently, well, I found that my planners were just turning into uh, to-do lists every day. They were just turning into do this, do this, and then scratch it out, scratch it out, and they just looked terrible. It just wasn't really useful for me. So I now, as much as I love paper, I really prefer paper and to write things down. But for business planning, I write everything in Google Calendar. I just have it all in the calendar. So what I don't get done today can whoosh, I can just digitally switch it to the next day or next week. I can also put things repeating. So if I have like a promotion, I know it's gonna repeat every month um, and I, that I need to see on my promotions calendar. I have different calendars that stack on top of each other. Um, then I can just click repeat and it'll repeat it monthly or weekly or whatever it needs to be. So that's why I use Google Calendar. It's not as delicious and exciting as a beautiful, luxurious planner, but you know, it's the most useful. And then each day I still, most of the time, like to take an actual little post-it note and write out my little to-do list because I like the paper. So that's basically what I do to keep myself on track. And then I have learned a couple of secrets over the years as far as productivity, which I thought I would share with you. Oh, if anyone is just hopping on, I'm having some turmeric infused dark hot chocolate. Yum, yum. Uh, my brother Robbie Peace guy says, I've never knitted in my life. How? My sister is the guru and nothing. Going to get needles today because I haven't taught you. I'm a goober. Um, 
what was I saying? Oh, yes. So here's some things that I learned, and these might be obvious, and you probably already know these, but they were like revolutionary to me when I discovered them, and this is just a matter of, um, yes, Cheryl, we might even have May Emerald up today. We will have more birthstone yarns. So definitely check the site today or tomorrow. And we actually have a pattern coming out with it. I think next week. What do you know? Oh, if anyone is new, make sure that you check the site this Friday because we have a new cropped knit pullover coming out with little baubles. <laughs> baubles and little butterflies. So stinking cute. I can't wait for you to see it. Anyways, okay, some things I've learned in business. One is to work ahead. So it seems like the amount of work you have to get done, because there's a certain amount that must be done in order to keep things rolling, keep things flowing, that it wouldn't matter when you did it. But I have discovered that working ahead is absolute genius and life-changing. So used to, back in the day, for example, if I had a promotion to get up or something to get done for today, I would do it today which I can't even fathom that now. I would prepare the color, I would get it listed, I would market it, I would do everything on that day. Holy cow, I don't even know how I did that. No, 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 no. The problem comes when you wake up on that day that you must get said thing done and you feel like poo lolly. Maybe you're sick, maybe you got some bad news, maybe you just don't feel good or feel like it. We all have those days, but you still gotta get it done so if you've worked ahead, when those bad days hit, you're golden. You don't have to give all that brain energy and brain power to that thing. It's done. It's been prepared in advance. Now, depending on your, the job that you do, that might not apply, but um, that works for me. So that is the, uh, the thing one, is to work ahead. As far ahead as I can work, I like to do that. I like to get things um ready in advance. I know that's so obvious, but that just really worked for me. It also allowed me to do thing number two, which is batch. Oh, it is now currently my time, 1234. One, two, three, four. I always notice when it's 1, 11, 11, 11, or 1234. And that just means everything is in order. I always remind myself, oh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Everything is in order in my life. Um, anyways. Um, thing number two, which working ahead allows me to do is to batch. Batching things is huge, huge. It is a huge time and energy saver because if you can, if you have a bunch of the same things that you have to do repeatedly, if you batch them and do like all of this type of thing at once and then get all those things done and then move on to the next thing and do all those things at once, it conserves your energy, it allows you to get in the zone. If you've read books on that, you'll know what I'm talking about. Athletes experience that a lot, like getting in the zone. It's a scientific thing, and it, it just conserves your energy and it reduces time spent. So it's really incredibly useful for productivity and getting a lot more done in a smaller amount of time. Yes, thank you. Expressionfiberarts.com is the website. Indeed. So thing number three, which I've learned as I've gotten a little older and wiser, if you may, darling, is to focus on growth, not goals. Now, I know I just said we plan out our goals and our visions, but, uh, da, 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 da. but as time has gone on, we have been less and less specific goal-oriented because you start to realize in life, well, hello, you start to realize that uh, you set a goal of whatever and you get there and you're still you and it's still now and you're still here and you're still living your life and you're like, huh, well, okay. So I have learned to, it helps me anyways, to focus on growth and becoming a better person, um, establishing better habits, rather than focusing on some, or on just, I'm not gonna say not at all, but on just external goals, because those will leave you flat, flatter than a pancake, emotionally. It really, life really is about growth and who we become and what we do. 
All right, have fun at work. Um, yes. I'm trying to remember. I read a book on that. I'm trying to remember the name. I forget right now. I'll have to remember for next time. Ah, come back. So anyways, um, another thing too. So those are the three main things. But within that final one, focusing on growth, not goals, is the concept of establishing habits. So to grow and achieve anything, it's important to focus on the habits you establish, whether that's getting up early. Tim and I get up at five every day. Maybe that doesn't work for you. Whatever works for you. Um, and then um, just establishing your habits so that, you're again, you're reducing energy, you're reducing brain power, and you are just kind of going on autopilot and getting the things done that need to get done. That works for me anyways. We're such creatures of habit, honestly. Hey, look, I'm making a thing. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's a coaster. What is it? What should I make it into? It's just a bunch of double crochets. Yes. Oh, hello in Lithuania. Uh, oh. Oh, gosh. YouTube comments disappear. I can't read them fast enough. If you've asked any questions and I've missed them, we're going to go back through and try to answer any questions. You can also um, e email me. I'm telling you, I can't do more than one thing at a time. Um, yes, this will be available to rewatch. So I am on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Instagram only saves for 24 hours, but you can go to youtube.com slash expression fiber arts or facebook.com slash expression fiber arts and rewatch it there. I will leave them up there indefinitely. So any who's, I hope those productivity help tips helped. I really love all of that. I don't talk about it too much. I know you guys don't come here to talk about business and productivity. We want to talk about the yarn, but I do love it. And that's a huge part of my life and why I always tend to combine businesses with my crafty things because I like both. That just feels like what I was meant to do. Hello in Portugal. How are you? Carolyn wants to know, replying to Mary, what is the shunki wrap? Oh, that is a scarf pattern on our website. Frida is crocheting a coaster. Yes. Phyllis says to make it a cup cozy. Olivia wants to know, do you dye all your own wool? We have a team of amazing dyers who do it locally here. We live in Charlotte right now. And so we have a team of local dyers that do all of our dyeing. When I started out, I was doing it all myself, but I don't anymore. I don't do the dyeing. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes, this yarn is my pearlescent fingering. It's a pretty taupey color, not available at the moment. It will be available later in the year probably. We have a pattern we're working on that uses this in a kit. So you can keep a watch for that, but it's our pearlescent fingering. It's a single ply and it drapes really nicely. Like I'm even crocheting and you can see how it drapes. So anyways, yes, um, if anyone had any final questions, do please let me know. I appreciate you all joining me live so much. This is, I think, the first time I've been live on three different places. So that is very exciting. There's always been, um... oh, Donna wants to know, have I done a talk on color? Matching, combining color secrets. I have not, but that is a great one. I actually really love, has anyone ever done, I don't even know if this is a thing anymore, but back in the day, my sister and I were obsessed with Color Me Beautiful. Uh, and we picked our seasons. Hi, Marcy! We picked our seasons. And so that just has always stayed with me, knowing what colors to wear, what colors look good on you based on your underlying skin tone. Like my skin tone is very golden, very yellowish. So I am a, an autumn in the season palette. But if you have not looked that up, um, I don't even know if that's still a thing. I'm sure there's a newer version. But Color Me Beautiful was back, oh my gosh. Was that in the, I was a little girl in the 80s. It had to have been in the 90s. Um, is there a store in Charlotte that sells this yarn? We currently don't wholesale. So we only sell through our website, expressionfiberarts.com. 
but we will ship it to you right here in Charlotte. We don't have a pickup location. Um, so yes, I would love to do a talk on color sometimes. Lori wants to know whatever happened to that sweater you were knitting a bulky yarn. I finished it and we are currently, actually we have finished and filmed an entire tutorial on it and how to knit the whole thing. So Tim is editing those videos. The pattern is in testing, so we're in the works. We're in the works. Oh, Tina says she's a winter. Yes, so you can either be a spring, summer, a, you know what the four seasons are. A spring, summer, an autumn, or a winter. Um, and they have different breakdowns within there. So I'm currently um, a warm autumn, I believe. Uh, but it's really fascinating. So if you're not sure what colors you look good in and you're trying to plan out your wardrobe, you can look that up. If anyone knows of like, if there's a different version now, I mean, there's probably an app or something these days. That was just a long time ago. Um, definitely holler at us and let us know. But then as far as picking yarn for projects, that's just gonna depend on what kind of knitter you are. Maybe I'll talk about that next time. Um, do you knit just for the enjoyment of it, more of an artistic thing? Then just pick whatever colors you want. But if you're knitting to wear things, you wanna match things in your closet. So what do you reach for most? What color sweaters do you reach for most? What color scarves or hats or whatever you wear do you reach for? That's kind of what I base it on, but I could talk about that next time for sure. This is a great idea. Deb is in autumn too, yes! Frida, yeah, I'm not sure what you would be. Maybe a summer. Anywho, um, thank you all for joining me. I am gonna hop and scooch I hope you all have a wonderful Tuesday. Continue to comment at me below and let me know um, what you want me to talk about in the next live. We have some great ideas and I appreciate all of them. And I'm just gonna finish out my row because that's the rule. Whenever anyone asks you to do anything, you have to say, let me finish my row first. Or you can say just one more row. Hey, I got a nice little thing. Maybe it's a nose warmer. I used to make nose warmers when I was a little kid, believe it or not. I would make crochet hooks out of popsicle sticks. I was appalled, I was at my friend's house and they didn't have crochet hooks. I was appalled. So I carved one out of popsicle sticks and I crocheted us little nose warmers in Juneau, Alaska and I put elastic on them and we went outside and our noses were warm. <laughs> I really want to know what needles I use. Um, well, hooks, right now I'm using Susan Bates. Needles, I usually use Chiagu's or Signature Needle Arts. I have both, so. Anyways, everybody, thank you for joining me. Have a wonderful day. I'm gonna hop off and I will see you hopefully next Tuesday if all goes to plan. And take care of yourself, be good to yourself, be kind to others. Life is good, let's be grateful. I love you all so much and I will see you Hopefully, oh, Caitlin, um, next Tuesday at noon. I'm trying to go Tuesday at noon, Eastern time. Eastern time, yes, at noon, so. All right, goodbye, everybody. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I have to end in three different places. So it's always like, meh, meh, meh. Bye. And I don't know how to end on Facebook, so we're gonna find out together. Bye, everybody.